Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. In today's video, we're going to be wrapping up our game of Global War 1914. This was the demonstration game, the one where I played by myself throughout the game. And the purpose of uh, this demonstration was to show players how to play the game. The game will be out. Uh, we. I think probably in a week, a week and a half, and that's when the pre-orders will go out, the people that have pre-ordered. I think the pre-order ended yesterday. I haven't looked at the website this weekend, but it was supposed to end yesterday, and so if it didn't, uh, you might want to get on there and tech check it out, and if it didn't, there there was an, um, um, a discount on the price of the game, plus there was a couple freebies you got when you did the pre-order, uh, but that might be gone already, so... Um, if it's gone, it's gone. And the pre-orders are going to go out first and then the game's going to go out next. Uh, we've been working hard on getting other things out uh, and ready. Um, this last few days I've been working on uh, setup sheets and reference sheets for the game. And Doug's been working on uh, all the 3D printed units. Uh, actually, we've all been doing things like that. Um, lots of research goes into uh, finding the right pieces and the right uniforms. <laughs> like you you got to get it right down to the boots, right? <laughs> what do we need the boots for? Nobody's looking at the boots. Got to do it anyway. Anyway, um, it's it's kind of neat though. Be, like you, you learn a lot about uh, uh, history by having to get that level of detail. Uh, anyway, that's what we've been working on and so um, I know you guys have been waiting for this game and it's kind of a drag that uh, it's taken so long, but at the same time it's uh, uh, it's frustrating for us and it but it has given us the opportunity to um, To do make some improvements like I got this map. We thought that this was going to be the final map uh, before that we had the map on a computer of course and so, you know, like in order to get down close to it and to see everything and to make everything sure everything's correct, you can only see a small portion of the map. Like what you're looking at on the screen here right now, that would be probably two or three times as much as I'm normally used to seeing when I'm looking at a computer uh, image of the map and I'm scrolling around. And so you don't really get a real sense of um, everything uh, in context with each other um, and plus uh, when I got the map I was able to play this game on it and I was able to see oh geez this is wrong like for instance there was uh, if you look at here there's no mountain border here in uh, in between um, Italy and Austria and the reason for that is, is because we expanded Europe um, so when it was expanded, it kind of like uh, it, it just kind of opened the door kind of thing. You know, like uh, the, the mountains are there. They just went north with the rest of the border, right? So uh, anyway, just little things like that, right? So we had to um, uh, make that border, uh, put that back on there. There was a spelling mistake on there. Another thing was too that uh, we've done and this wasn't a problem with the V4 map, but you take a look at the C zones there. It's hard to see them, isn't it? I find it hard to see too, um, just looking and, and being in the same room, um, especially like with the glare of, of the light on the map, right? Uh, you don't get that problem with the computer screen because it's lit up from the back. So you would never know that just by looking at a computer screen that, that uh, that could be done better and so these lines are going to be darkened up just a little bit they're, they're going to look more like the lines from the v4 game and those lines aren't hard to see at all but these ones are or at least i found uh, found that anyway my eyes are getting a bit old but still i think we can do a little bit better with that and we have and there's other improvements uh, other corrections uh, let me just show you another one here so you see this uh for the convoy line there, we pointed out. See that thing right there um, that tells you how much the convoy line is worth? That's not in a good spot because 
um, like when I was looking to find out how much that convoy line was worth, I couldn't find it. I thought, oh, we forgot to put it on there. Well, it's, it turns out that that's where your American ships are for most of the game is in that sea zone right there. And so for that reason alone, that wasn't a very good place to put that uh, marker. And so we've moved it to right here, right, right, right there. So that, that'll never get covered up right there. And then, you know, a little, it's the same thing, but it's just moved so that um, you don't have to move all of your ships just to find it, right? And a couple of things, uh, little things here and there that we've done. So we've used the time wisely and productively to, uh, to get things done um, while we wait for others to finish, uh, contractors to finish our player aids that uh, we sent out a long time ago. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's a little frustrating having to wait for all these things, but the world is still kind of catching up with uh, um, supply issues, right? Like, just forget it if you want to get something from Japan. Like, that was one of the reasons why this game took an extra year or so was because of Japan, right? Or sorry, not Japan, China. Um, like, normally we would have been dealing with them. And that's also why we, we weren't able to get any plastic pieces the company that had made all of the plastic pieces from HBG, Doug can't get all of them. He, he doesn't know where they are. <laughs> Maybe they all died from that factory. Who knows, right? Um, but anyway, like um, things like that, it's just uh, the unavoidable delays. Uh, we've been working hard, but um, getting other people to work with us is uh, a bit of a problem, right? Um, anyway, let's, let's uh, take a look at this game here. So, uh, why am I quitting this game now? I mean, it's not done, right? We just finished the summer of 1914. Well, th there's a few reasons for that. Uh, first of all, uh, as I stated earlier in this video, this, the purpose of this game was just to teach you how to play. What I wanted to avoid going into this video was teaching you how to win this game. This, is, this was never going to be a strategy video uh, and I did not want to lead you in one direction or another on how to win the game. Um, I want you to figure that out for yourself. That would be like, you know, putting out a video game and, and, and giving the cheat codes with it, right? <laughs> you know, and you know, it, it, it could be that, that you'll come up with better strategies than the playtesters have anyway. I mean, the more this game gets played, uh, the better we'll all get, including the people who are playtesting. But um, that's not really why, but it's more that I wanted you guys to get this game, to know how to play it, and then to figure out, okay, how am I going to win this game? And that's why I quit it now, because there's uh, at least three turns left. Like, if you were to do uh, not do the variable ending, there would be three turns left in the, next, the game. And so it's at this point, you got to be looking at the points. It's kind of like version 3. Um, I haven't played version 4 yet. There's fewer points in that game. And it's a, it works a little different because you're getting benefits along the way with your points. But this is more like version 3 of, of 36 where there's a bunch of points and you get them at the end of the game. You don't get anything for them before that. And so it's at this point in this game that you will be looking at the points and you'll be looking at your opponent's points. How can I score mine? How can I prevent my opponent from scoring theirs? And so that's why I wanted to quit right now. I'm really glad that I was able to, um, that the Russian Revolution happened when it did, because I, I uh, wanted to, I wasn't going to quit the game until we had a chance to play a turn of the Russian Revolution. And we did get that opportunity. Uh, we played one round with the Revolution. And uh, just to give you a bit of the flavor of, of how it, it runs and uh, a little bit of instruction on how it works, of course, uh, you'll need to play it a little bit more. I, I was only able to start phase one. There's phase two of it as well that happens after the war ends. And we didn't do the prequel either, but then you can just follow the instructions for that. Um, and uh, it's not that hard to figure out. But anyway, um, I, I, that's why I quit early more than anything was because I didn't want to lead you to a conclusion. I didn't want to show you how to win. And in fact, when I played the game, I played a very vanilla game. 
Like there was no big naval battles. Um, I didn't, uh, I wasn't playing cutthroat at all, like taking, so let's say the Germans and going for, you know, a big hit on, on some country or the British or whatever, you know, trying to kneecap the Ottomans or something. I didn't want any of the countries in the game to be taken out early. I just wanted to show how to play the game without doing too much damage to any of the, the players in the game because I wanted to be able to keep showing you, you know, okay, this is the Ottomans and these are the options that they have and okay, now it's the Italians and they're limited, but this is what they can do. And the Austrians, like if the Austrians, the way they'd started the game, if they'd been out, you know, like four rounds ago, then there's not much to show you for the, for the Austrians anymore. So it was good that they came back and it was good that I didn't go for the jugular on them. Uh, I'm not sure I could have got it anyway, as you, you've seen if you watch this series, that it, it's really difficult to play offense in this game. And so uh, there's no... There's no guarantee that if I would have went for the jugular on anybody, that it would have worked, right? Uh, you're going to find out as you play this game that um, that <laughs> it's not like 36 where you can just go on a raid and and you know come back a conquering hero. <laughs> it's a it's a grind. You've got to grind your way in there. You know, like uh, there's things that just don't work as well. I had a conversation with somebody last week. Um, I won't mention any names, but somebody who, who contacted me and asked me about one of the units in the game and why should I even bother buying that unit. Well, that's if you're looking at the unit as uh, the same unit in 36. And, it, you know, it's called the same unit, but it, it's got a different role in this game. Even though the stats are the same and everything, this game is played differently. Uh, and really that question had to do with trench lines and you know, buying the specialist infantry wasn't as good as buying the regular infantry because they didn't add to the trench line. But that's that's only true in a trench line. When you're not in a trench line, all that infant, all that other types of infantry, they are what they are, right? Uh, and the, most of the game is not played in a trench line. The biggest part of the game is played on the Western Front, where there's going to be a perpetual trench line, but. The rest of the game is not played in a trench line, and that's where you're going to use your specialist infantry. But regular infantry does have a bigger role in this game than it does in 36 by far. Uh, so, you know, like you just got to get used to that. And you've got to find other uses and other ways to use the other types of infantry. Like there are more types of infantry class units in this game than there is in 36. And that's because we have a, a lack of technology compared to World War II in this game. And we wanted to put some more units in. Uh, I, I can imagine trying to um, develop a game from 100 years earlier than this. I mean, what are you going to do, right? You've got one type of ship and, and you've got infantry and artillery and cavalry and that's about it, right? <laughs> okay, well, we've got three kinds of cavalry. These guys got fast horses or something, you know? Like you gotta figure something out, right? And so this game, that was one of the things we were able to do was put more uh, infantry class units in. But anyway, if you can't use your 36 mindset when you play this game. You have to play this game for what it is. That's why I just, I kinda gave you options and I didn't show you how to win the game. I didn't tell you how to win the game. Um, I just said, you know, like here's some of your options for this nation. And here's some of your options for that nation. And I talked at great length at the beginning of this series. Each nation had its own video, right? And then after that, I lumped them together where a bunch of them would go on the same video. And we just went through the motions of playing the game. But again, I did not go uh, and try to kill anybody. It wasn't cutthroat. It was just um, showcasing the mechanics of the game. Let's put it that way. And, uh, and I'm done now. Like there's not much that I didn't show you. I guess I uh, uh, didn't do any strategic bombing, but I'll tell you, you know, like in, in the games that I've played, that hasn't been a big part of any game. I mean, when you consider the time, there wasn't a lot of strategic bombing done in World War I. That doesn't mean that you can't do it in your game. Like you, you can develop that technology if you want. We put that technology in the game. But um, it's, it, I don't think it's going to be as effective as it is in the 36 game. 
I don't think it's ever going to be as effective and, and it shouldn't be. Like we didn't make things the way we would want them. We made things the way they were. This is a, a historical board game, right? And so we try to keep it that way. And when you play this game um, and you get bogged down in trench lines, then you, you get to realize, okay, this, this is more like what it should be, not what I want it to be. Uh, because uh, like the first time I played this game, I was a bit disappointed because I didn't have that offensive power. I couldn't go on these raids, you know, where uh, I could I could do some fantastic thing and and everybody go, wow, I never thought of that. I mean, here you kind of got to plod your way towards it, and it's just a different way of playing. There's just as much strategy involved in this game, but the strategy is in different areas, right? The, the diplomacy is different and you know um, how you choose your casualties is, is very different in this game and and there are reasons why you do and, and don't do things and uh, you know so you'll just get used to that right um, one of the other things that I wasn't able to get to because uh, well I was about to get to it the, there's um, the Spanish flu that's coming and there's no guarantee that you'll hit that but i think we've got five different random events that that uh, reference the spanish flu so it's likely you'll get hit by at least one of them right like one of them is in the russian revolution card deck and four of them are in the regular uh game and in the regular game what it is is that the spanish flu starts in the united states and in france and so you'll remove an infantry class unit out of every territory in those home countries uh, so that you have a minimum of one there. Like if all you have is one infantry class unit you know, on every territory in the United States, then they're not going to lose any. But it's not just those territories. It's all the territories that are adjacent. So when you look at France over here, uh, so all the territories that are adjacent, so the Belgians are going to lose a guy and the Germans are gonna lose a guy, and the Swiss are gonna lose a guy, and the Italians are gonna lose, and I guess these guys don't have any there. So everybody that's adjacent to those. And so that's the first Spanish flu uh, random event. The second one is not just the home countries, it's all over the place. So then you look at down there, the Americans, uh, wherever there's more than one infantry class in it, they're gonna lose one. And everybody that's adjacent to them is going to lose one as well, uh, down to a minimum of one, right? Uh, like if they've only got one there, then they're not going to lose the last one. They're just going to um, lose one uh, and keep one there. And so that's, uh, that's something that, you know, like if you thought you had a plan, right? You're going for your points and everything. It's like, whoa, where did my, my infantry go? <laughs> um, it doesn't completely completely wipe you out or anything, but it does make you think uh, going into the latter part of the game. Maybe I should be buying some ships or some artillery or some cavalry or something because it only affects the infantry class units, right? And yes, we know that uh, you know there there are people on those ships and things like that, but you know, like you have to cut it out somehow. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna pull a ship off the board because of the Spanish flu, right? Uh, so you know we had to figure out something, and we figured, okay, let's let's uh, let's hit the infantry class units with this, and and that'll be what we do. So that's something that I didn't get to show you in this game that that is there. And the last reason why I don't want to show you it is because I'm going to be playing you guys. <laughs> you know whether it's uh, whether it's in person or on YouTube or whatever. Um, I don't want to show you what, what I'm going to do. Like uh, here I am playing every single nation. So if you know how I play Austria and you know how I play Germany and you know how I play France, you know, all these nations and everything, well then um, I'm, an op I'm an open book and you're not, right? <laughs> so, you know, uh, and that's just a minor part of it. I mean, but that was in the back of my mind. Like when I thought, oh, I should do this. And I, no, I'm going to save that one for when the game actually means something. <laughs> so I, I did not want to show you any any uh, hidden secrets that I have. And it's not that I have many, right? It's not like I've played this game a hundred times or anything, right? Um, and so uh, that's, that's something too, but it's not much, right? 
anyway, um, I did have fun doing it, but I am getting kind of tired of it. It's really, really hard to play this game by yourself. Uh, well, it would be 36 too if anybody's ever tried to play 36 by yourself. It's cool for the first five to ten turns, but after a while, man, you just start getting, uh, uh, I don't know what, what the word is, but um, it, it just, it, it starts to weigh on you after a while because, you know, like you wish that uh, you could just play this one nation and, you know, I didn't have to think about all those other things. And you could see as I was playing the game, probably as I was getting further along that there was more and more things that I was forgetting and stuff just because I I don't have all day to think about what I'm going to do here. Like uh, I, I wasn't putting out a video every day. I've got other things going on in my life um, besides this game and besides helping to develop this game uh, in the things that I do besides uh, play this game. You know, I've got family and I've got obligations in my own community, right? So I, I don't have all day. Uh, I, I've got some time, but I didn't have all day to do that. And the other thing was that it, it would be easier and it would have been better if I, I could have had the player aids so that I could show you a little better. It would have been easier to illustrate how combat works because we, we actually spent quite a long time on the battle boards. Uh, we've got everything on those battle boards, you know, so that every unit that, that is uh, first strike or that has um, target selection, you know, like everything is listed on, the, on there. And so it would have been easier to remember, okay, um, I've got three artillery, so I'm bumping them up. And you take a look at the train and you're bumping them up and down and observation and all kinds of other things uh, that you're adding to the mix, right? Uh, and you could see how I did it, where I just, you know, like, I just, okay, I've got three dudes there and uh, it looks like mountains, you know? <laughs> the small attacks are easy, but it's when you get into those huge attacks that uh, a battle board really helps out. And so uh, that kind of hampered me a little bit. Um, that I didn't have those battle boards. Uh, I'm not complaining about that though. Like I said, it was nice to have that extra time to to develop the game that we had. Uh, there's gonna, you're gonna find that there's fewer mistakes. And uh, as people were watching this, they were asking questions and and you know we we've, we've been clarifying rules. Uh, just yesterday, I made a change in the Russian Revolution because I'm going through that now, right? So as I've moved along in this game, I've uh, I've been going through the rules and and making sure like I know what I'm doing for the most part. You know I'm about to do it, but I'll, I'll go and look at the rules first anyway. You know if that's the first time I did it in this game, whatever that thing is that I'm about to do, that I'll go look at the rules and and see. Okay, I want to make sure that that I'm doing it exactly like it says it does. And if it doesn't say the right thing. Well, that's an easy way for me to catch it, right? Like uh, either I've got it wrong in my mind or it's not explained very well or it's just plain wrong. And so then uh, that involves usually a phone call between me and Bob and we discuss it and and decide, you know, what do you want to do here? Um, well, what do you want to do here? <laughs> we'll talk it out, you know. It could be a long conversation or it could be a very short conversation and that's been very helpful. Uh, it was helpful playing this game solo like that so that we have the time to work through it. And I, I can't even count how many changes we've made since I started, not just this game, but the series before that, what the how-to series. There's been a lot of changes and clarifications made to the rules because I approached that as the same way I did this, where I wanted to make sure what I was telling you on camera was exactly the same thing as what it said in the rule book. Now then, as far as units coming out, I don't know if you've looked on the website lately, but we have just put out a whole bunch more cavalry. Like we don't have, we didn't have much cavalry until now. Like this is your Mongolian cavalry. I think that's actually a World War II guy, but I don't, you know, I don't think that a Mongolian cavalry uh, changed much in their uniform between World War I and World War II, right? I don't even know if there were uniforms, but anyway, um, we've got all the major powers and not all of them are on the website yet. I think the Germans and the British aren't on there yet. 
I think that might be it though. But everybody else, the Russian cavalry, even though we've got Cossack cavalry out, and we've had that for quite a while, there's also just a regular Russian cavalry. Like here's, here's your Cossack cavalry right here. And you see the base on them. We decided to change the base afterwards so that all the bases are round. Where's the one that's got a round base? I can't see one right off the bat. Oh, here's one. So this is, this is a Chinese cavalry uh, from World War II, and it's got a round base on it. Anyway, they're going to all have those round bases so they won't tip over very easily, right? Uh, anyway, all of the major powers are going to have them. We've got them out already for the Ottomans and the Austrians and the Americans and the Russians. And I think the Italians and the French and the the German and the British are done. I'm not sure why they're not on the site yet. They probably haven't printed enough of them. He doesn't like to put them out on the website and, until they're until he's got enough of them printed up so that you know the first number of people that grab a bunch of them, it all it does it doesn't all of a sudden say there's none left, right? And then uh, like just this morning, I did a bunch more research for the other ones, the minor ones. Like here, you see there's a Polish cavalry. So I had to go on the internet and, and find what a Polish cavalry in World War I looked like. What is this one? I think this guy's a Japanese one. The Japanese one from World War II. So anyway, I did the, the Polish and the uh, Chinese warlord, uh, Mexicans from the Mexican Revolution, and the Dutch. There's a cavalry down there in the um, the Dutch East Indies down there. So, man, that was a hard one to find. Um, find out what kind of uniforms they wore and everything. But uh, there's going to be all the cavalry available soon. We got another torpedo boat destroyer. I'm not sure if that one's out on the website yet or not. But uh, I've seen it, so if it's not out yet, then it will be. And that's a Smith class uh, torpedo boat destroyer, and that's an American one. And I just seen a picture two days ago of a armored train. So these armored trains here, uh, like that, is uh, actually a World War II armored train. And it's really difficult to find pictures of just about anything from World War I because <laughs> it was the early days of cameras, right? And, you know, like it's not like us today when we snapping everything on our phones. Look, this is what I ate for lunch today. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like that back then, right? So um, we, the best picture we could find and, and a, a cool scope that we found was for an Austro-Hungarian armored train. And so we're just gonna put that one out for all the nations. You'll just buy that one and, and it, you'll just color them. Like I didn't put any armored trains on the board until the Russian Revolution started. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna put any on the board, but um, just it's kind of obvious that you're not going to see a lot of them in the game, right? Um, it's just that they're, they're kind of expensive. Um, so you, you're not gonna have like 20 of them on the board and so it's not that big a deal that you don't have one like it costs a lot of money to to develop these things to research them and to get a, a modeler to make a model of one and then to start printing them right and like i don't know of how many ottoman trains we will ever use and so to to go through all that just to have uh, a real ottoman train on the board you know it's just not worth it so we found one good sculpt the best one we could find was the austrian one and that's the one that we're using that should be out probably within a week if i've already seen the picture of it that means that uh, one is already made and they're making more they might have have them all made right now might even be on the website right now i don't know usually um they don't go on the website on sundays it's more like a monday or tuesday thing when that happens um anyway so there's more and more stuff that keeps coming out um there's that torpedo boat destroyer and that train and all that cavalry i i think we've got all the infantry out right now but then the next thing after that is going to be the trench fighters like i'm using trench fighters from 
custom infantry, like from the 172 boxes, but those are really hard to find. Like I had to pay an extraordinary amount of one for money for, I think it was the British one. I had to order it out of Europe, that box, because uh, they're like, some of those are just hard to find. And some of them are easy to find. Like Doug's got a couple of them. He's got the Russian ones and he's got the Austrian ones that, that I'm using, but I think that's it. And, and so they're, they're, they're difficult to find, but we're going to have them all and they're going to have all their special weapons and everything. Um, it was interesting researching them. Let me see this guy here. See this guy, he's got, what is that? Well, he's got an ax, but trench fighters were, were quite unique. They, uh, <laughs> they, they, they made up their own weapons. Like they tape, a a club to their hand, a club with spikes on it, taped it to their hand. And they were smaller units, right? And they'd sneak off and go to the other trench. And what their job was, was to go and to kill everybody in, in uh, the enemy trench, uh, except for a couple people. They, they wanted to capture uh, and gather intelligence, right? So they, if they could find maps or any kind of information at all, like they'd go and, and these guys were brutal. Uh, the first ones that were used were the Canadians and uh, everybody else, uh, they were they were like, wow, you know, we should do that too. <laughs> so ever, eventually they all started doing it. I think the Germans copied them next and then um, uh, the Australians, I think, were good at it. And everybody else just eventually, you know, like in order to keep up, they had to do it too. But just looking on the internet at some of the weapons they used, and we'll have some of those weapons. Uh, they won't be great, easy to see uh, because the sculpts are so small, but uh, we're gonna have them on there anyway, the different kind of knives they used. And, you know, like none of them use the long rifles that you see in, in this game, right? With the, with the uh, like these, these would be huge guns for them. They didn't use those. They were hand-to-hand -hand guys. That's what the trench fighters were. They, they'd go and they, they, they were raiding. Uh, looking for intelligence or doing, you know, some kind of specialty work. It would be like your first, kind of like your your first special forces guy, uh, but with an attitude. Like these guys were killers. They they literally were. I can't imagine being in their boots and the things that they had to do and that they had to live with for the rest of their lives. But anyway, that's that's what's coming out next after we get this wave of them done. And you'll see the odd ship come out and everything. We've got most of the ships already. Um, we could use a, a British torpedo boat destroyer. Uh, hopefully we'll have one of those soon. But you know, there's the odd thing that, that we're gonna get. Uh, uh, I think we need more artillery and that'll come. But you gotta remember there's lots of games that we're doing, right? We're not just doing the 14 game. Uh, we got the 36 game and we got the 85 game and uh, there's a, a 46 game that's, that's uh, being developed and, and might be out this year. So there's that. There's uh, post World War II, basically, like right after World War II. Uh, we need um, sculpts for that, and you might have seen some come out lately. Anyway, uh, I don't know what else to tell you, other than um, everything is available. Um, you, if you go to Global War 1914, you can see that uh, you click on that and there's a, a whole bunch of tabs in there. We put everything in there that you're, you can possibly need for this game. All the 3D pieces, the 172 pieces, all of the markers and everything. Um, with the gas markers, you might want to wait on those because we've got three gas markers coming soon. As soon as we can get them done, they'll be out. But um, rather than purchasing some gas markers that we have currently, that don't have the type of gas on them, um, because if you look here, there's there's chlorine gas, phosgene gas, and mustard gas. That first one there, tear gas. There's no marker for that. Everybody's got tear gas, and it's not uh, it's not something that um, we're making a marker for. There's it's not necessary. Anyway, um, what you really want to pay particular attention to is the accessory section, because there we've grouped things in there like you can get um a set of these things right like a set of these for all the nations or a set of the uh let me, let me just grab them here 
throw a few of them down. These are your task force markers. So just sets of things, sets of uh, sets of uh, decals and sets of uh, labels, you know, for labeling your boxes where you're going to put your units. Uh, all kinds of sets. There's uh, marker sets, uh, roundel sets. I think there might be a roundel set already for, you know, just the regular roundels like like these ones here, where you're. Uh, I don't know if he's got one yet, um, but anyway. Uh, all kinds of different sets. There's the Russian Revolution set and there's the prequel set and all of these sets are in there so th that's something that you'll want to pay attention to. Go and get the stuff that you want out of there because it'll be cheaper that way. You'll get a bit of a discount and then after that say okay now what, what else do I want? You know like um, units or you know whatever it is that you need or want or whatever and um, bear in mind that you could play this game with just your 1936 pieces like if you wanted to play this game you could play it with that you, um, it wouldn't look right like it wouldn't look like mine mine looks pretty cool but <laughs> you know like uh, you've got all the pieces there right you could just say okay these guys these guys are going to be dreadnoughts and this is going to be you know like your marines would be your naval infantry we have mountain infantry in this game so there you go you got your mountain infantry and then just buy the stuff slowly that uh, you know that at your own pace that you a pace that you can afford right where you're switching out your planes or you're switching out to your infantry or whatever you're switching out you know um but just to get started though um you don't really need that much uh um you could use colored chips you know like we're talking about let me just grab one here. So just the regular kind of chips that you put your units on. People do that already. Uh, you can use colored chips to mark whatever, you know, trench fighters or this or that or whatever else, right? Just to get yourself into the game. And then, like I said, uh, you just slowly but surely um, buy what you need for the game. Uh, you don't have to have everything up front just because General Hand Grenade's got it. <laughs> that guy's crazy anyway screw him anyway uh it's been fun i'm glad that you were able to join me i'm really glad that so many of you tuned in for so long and i'm not going to apologize for not showing you the end of the game uh, i've already told you why i didn't do that and i think that's uh for the best um for everybody like uh i want you to figure out how you would win the game I'm not going to teach you how to win the game, at least not yet anyway. Once you guys have had a chance to try it and everything, maybe someday down the road I'll do some strategy videos, but definitely not right now. I want you to learn how to win the game on your own first, um, and that'll be more fun that way. So, thanks again for joining me, and for the last time in this video series, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade, out.